two fishermen on a fishing mission from the west coast of Ireland to the east coast of England. Welcome to the Greater Rod Race. Well, this is it, it's crunch time. This is the last day of the trip. We've got our ferry to catch out of Dublin tomorrow and we're still 17 pounds short of our target. What are we gonna do about it? Well, we found a lake, a lake that we can fish just outside the town of Virginia. If that produces 17 pound of fish, we're on the ferry. If it doesn't, we're in big trouble. Don't spare the horses, Rem. Well, we're at the lake, as you can see. We're set up. Mick's trying for a few pike. And um, I'm fishing on the pole for basically whatever I can get. And at the moment, it's small skimmer bream and roach like this, which probably go about 10 or 12 to the pound. So I've got a lot of work cut out if I'm gonna catch 17 pounds. Well, Matt's catching some quite small fish on the pole. So I'm trying to help him out. I'm fishing a worm down the margin on a waggler float. But unfortunately, I'm still catching the same stamp of fish in the maybe two to three ounce class. And as Matt said, it's going to be a hard day's work to build up 17 pound of those, but we've got no choice. Sitting here, a couple of things worry me. The first one is that we know very little about this lake and the species it contains, the size of the fish it contains. It looks like a nice place to fish and it obviously does contain coarse fish because there's a few signs around the fishery that say so. Just looking around the lake, there's no one else fishing here today. So that does worry me a little bit. It's a problem we've encountered all the way across Ireland and I'm just hoping that today we're on a lake where the fish have been left alone and there's a few for us to catch. What I've decided to do tactically is to put in some ground bait on the deck with some casters in it, fish maggots over the top and pick off a few of the smaller fish just to build some weight and then periodically switch across to a bigger bait like casters or worm that's less likely to interest the small fish. Just make those periodic changes to see whether the bigger fish have moved in. Even though we're only catching tiddlers, you've got to work to a bit of a sensible procedure. Fire out a few maggots, first of all, just to get them interested. Make sure you've got a bait on. Well, that's the tackle, very, very simple. Two maggots on a size 16, little 3BB float, set about 18 inches deep, just the way you would when you start fishing when you're a kid. Go to easy waters where you get plenty of bites. And that's certainly what you get here. This is a really easy water for catching tiddlers. Floats out, just sink the line a little bit. Just wait for them to come round. Oh, lovely little bite developing. There it goes. Got one straight away. Another 30 yards. I doubt whether this one will take me to the end of the platform. <laughs> but they all count. We do to go for a bigger fish. Probably fish worm on the bottom and just wait. You think we should do that? I'd put some corn and worm down. Well, put corn down and fish worm on it. I think if you wait with the worm, you might get some better breed than roach. I mean, I have tried worm and I can't get a bite on it. Yeah, but you're fishing two and a half foot deep, Mick, that's why. No, I've, I started off on the bottom with it.
Well, I've always believed if we carry on like this, we're gonna have to fish till the cows come home, and guess what? It looks like they are. We're grinding away at it here. I've, I've tried fishing on the bottom for bigger fish. Absolutely nothing showing. The lake's absolutely solid with very small roach and skimmer bream. And that's almost a sure sign, really, that it's been netted. Um, Mick's had no action at all from the pike. Um, these are the smaller fish that have either escaped the net or they're basically fish that have bred and you've got a huge fry survival rate because there's nothing to predate on, on the eggs. I don't think we've got any choice but to just hope by grinding away at it we can catch 17 pound of fish, but it's an awful lot of bits. Well, I think I've had about 40 tiddlers now and they've not all been real small. Some of them are maybe four ounces, so I reckon I may have around three, three and a half pounds at the moment. And if I can double that and Matt can match it, then we're pretty well there, really. And a skimmer bream. I really do think we've got a chance of doing this now. About another 220 fish and we'll be there. Probably be midnight, but we're gonna stay at it till we do it. I'm about two or three hours behind Mick, and what I'm trying to do is catch him up, basically. Mick's sort of act acting as a pacemaker. He doesn't realise it, but I reckon Mick's on target for about eight or nine pounds of fish. And really, I need to produce the same. So I'm trying to catch more than Mick in the time that we're fishing, just to try and catch him up. But um, I don't think I'm succeeding. I'm probably keeping pace with him now, but I'm, I'm probably not catching enough fish to match what Mick's going to put in the way bag at the end of the day, and that's a problem because we need 17 pounds, and I think I'm on target for about five or six at the moment. It's a real blow. But the interesting thing with this speed fishing is we're fishing up in the water, trying to catch these fish, what we call on the drop as the bait falls through the water. And it's all about speed. It's all about getting into a rhythm, feeding occasionally, watching the float like a hawk, getting the strike right, because the bites are absolutely lightning fast. It develops a momentum of its own, really. Roach. It's not the best fishing in the world, but it's what we need to do. We're just trying to grind a result out now. And the more efficient you can be at this sort of thing, the more fish you're gonna catch. But I fear the Duke has set too strong a pace for me to match, and. It could be me that lets the side down, actually. Well, as I'm fishing here, I'm starting to get a little bit concerned because all the time I've got one eye on the sun over there, which is dropping down very quickly towards the horizon. I've been baiting up a swim for bigger fish by balling in some ground bait with casters and I've periodically dropped in over the top of it. There's nothing to show yet, but I'm just beginning to wonder whether I should go for the gamble and try to nail a couple of bigger fish. They may not even be here and that's part of the problem, but it would get us over the finishing line. So I just don't know. I mean, I can pound away at these little critters, I suppose, and hope that I just about get enough, but very touch and go.
Well, I'm going to go out for the bigger fish. I'm going to move the float up, go more over depth, and um, I'm going to see if I can snare a bigger one. I've put out some ground bait earlier on. Periodically, I've been trying over the top of it. I'm going to try again now. It's going to lose me valuable time fishing for the small fish, but I feel I've got to do it. A lot of fish, but uh, I don't think it's going to amount to much weight. Hey, that's more than the thaws. Hey, that's great. Now, what does Matt need? Oh, if Matt's got seven pounds or just under, then we've done it. Let's go and weigh Matt's in. Well, I'm sorry, Mick. What you got there? But I think I've let you down, mate. Right, see you road. I started two hours too late. And I saw what you were doing and I tried to keep up. And I think I probably did, but that two hours has cost me dear, mate. I'm sorry. Oh, some... oh, I don't know, mate. I do. You, you could have caught more, but I think that might be enough. I don't think so. I've spent a lot of time messing around for big fish on the bottom. I underestimated my catch, actually. Oh, there's quite a few more in. That's a lot of hard work, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I underestimated my catch by yeah, that. So. You, you, I can tell you've got a good net. You've done all right. Eight, eight ten. Yes. Eight ten, so that means we've got just a tad under 19 pounds. <laughs> we've done it. Well done, us. <laughs> We're there. Well done, mate. <laughs> well, we've only done it by about a pound and a half, but we have squeaked in. We're on the ferry. We're going to Wales tomorrow, and then that's the next leg of the journey. We ain't out of the woods yet. We've got a lot of fish to catch in front of us, but I'll tell you what, that is a great result. Well, this is it, we're on the way. We're uh, just getting on the ferry now at uh, Dunleary and in about two and a half hours time, we're gonna be in Hollyhead, which is great news. We've endured all kinds of bad weather, the wettest spring in Ireland for however many years. The van was cramped, uncomfortable and full of wet clothes most of the time. The fishing wasn't easy, but we've done it, or at least we've done the first leg. Now we've got the challenge of the second one. And this one, well, it's gonna be longer, but I think we can do it. Two fishermen on a fishing mission from the west coast of Ireland to the east coast of England. Welcome to the Greater Rod Race. Well, here we are. We've crossed the Irish Sea. 
and we're actually very near to the town of Hollyhead in Anglesey. In fact, we're dangerously close to RAF Valley, as you can probably tell by the planes going overhead. But, you know, we're not going to be fishing at sea here. We have found a little gem because earlier on today we pulled into a campsite and we found this fabulous little lake. And by sheer luck, the owner gave us permission to fish it. Now, this looks like a really interesting place. I can see one or two nice fish swimming around in it. If I look down from the high bank over there, they look like carp and it's fish we need. The keep net's at zero, the English leg has started, we've got to get to low stoft, we need to hit the ground running. Come on, Mick. Well, this is it, it's crunch time. We've now moved on from Loch Lacken, we're at Loch Rammer. Well, we've made a good start, we've got a five pounder in the bag already. It's going to be a hard day's work to build up 17 pound of those, but we've got no choice. It's small skimmer bream and roach like this. We're going to have to fish till the cows come home. A lot of fish. Hey, that's great. It's going way mass. It's a lot of hard work. <laughs> we've done this with it. Well done, mate. <laughs> Well, this really is an interesting place because here we are within a mile of the sea and I certainly didn't expect for us to be so close to the sea and yet still fishing for carp, but we are. We found this really lovely little pool. It's, it's only about an acre in size and it's one of those little disused places that there aren't many of left in Britain nowadays. But we've seen one or two good fish cruising around in here. They look like quite sizeable carp. We don't know how big they are. They could be five pounds or they could be 25 pounds. How about that? <laughs> I just saw my line cutting across the lake. <laughs> it's gone right under this bush here. I'm in trouble, I think. I can feel the fish kicking away. It is very, very badly snagged underneath these roots here, so I've got a real problem now. Well, this may seem a little bit silly, but I've plumbed the depth quite extensively across this lake, and I can tell you that it's very, very shallow here in this corner. So I'm not too worried about actually wading in. If I tread very, very carefully, I may be able to just paddle out there and free the line from those bushes. Right, well, I'm just gonna feel my way out here. We're using the landing net pole just to check how firm the bottom is. I wouldn't mind if it was a warm day. Just try winding the rod right under the branches to see if I can thread it through. Well, unfortunately, that isn't coming out. What a drama. Well, as everything happened so quickly, I'll perhaps better explain what happened. As I said, we knew there were carp in this lake and I just started fishing for them. I baited up about 45 minutes ago and I'd only just cast in. We've got no idea how big the carp go to in here, but they look sizeable enough. And then when I was talking to you, I just saw the line whizzing past me, picked up the rod, the fish shot straight round this tree and into the weed bed beyond, literally flew away down there. How it got through so many stems and so many roots, I'll never know. And how fish do this, I'll also never know, but it actually transferred the hook into a lily stem round the corner. So the good news is the fish has got away, it's not towing any tackle. And in case you think I took too many risks here, remember I had plumbed the depth and I did probe around with the landing net, so I knew what kind of depth of water I was getting into. And uh, I felt that uh, the fish's welfare was worth uh, the effort of getting a little bit wet and cold. But it's a bad start for us because we need fish like that one. It felt like a good fish and it could have got us well into our journey on the way to Low Stoft, but um, was not to be. <laughs> the noise on these jets is unbearable. I didn't hear my alarm go just, but I saw the end of the rod go with a real whack and something's either picked up the bait or swam across the line. They are, it's gone again. Now, it could be a carp, but I'm told there's a lot of eels in here as well. Right, 
why they'd be mad this noise, but we've just got to catch a fish here because it's about 14 miles to the next venue we think we can catch some fish at. And if we don't catch something, we're stuck here with all this noise. The bottom line is we've had some really terrible weather. It makes the fishing hard. And then at the end of the day, when you get back to the van, you've got to dry all the wet clothes out, the nets and everything. Nothing gets properly dry and, oh, I just love the sun to come out now. Well, we expected a few highs and a few lows in this series, and this is definitely a low. The rains followed us across from Ireland, and as you can see, we're just getting soaking wet. We're freezing cold, and quite frankly, we're fed up. We just can't get a bite. Matt's got a lovely swim, actually, in the corner. He's fishing with the float, and that's a nice way to fish these small waters, but I can't really find anywhere to fish because, really, you need to fish against near cover with the float. So what I've done, I've changed to a ledger setup. I've got one bait right on the far bank, very, very tight to a bush. The other bait I've cast over a rock, over a weed bed, and uh, I'm fishing against some cover there. But I've been waiting here a couple of hours, nothing's happened, getting colder, getting wetter. We really are struggling, to be frank, and uh, we desperately need some fish. I just hope we can get one before it gets dark. Well, that's 10 hours down the drain. I haven't caught anything. Matt's lost one. After all I've taught him, he's lost one. We've got no fish, we can't even move an inch. Well, as you can probably see, the sun's shining at the moment. It's a different day to yesterday, but it's a little bit windy and that's gonna cause problems. Just behind me here, there's a weed bed on an entrance to a small bay. And I've seen carp move in and out of that bay quite regularly. So it's a great ambush point, but this wind is tricky. And it's a little bit like trying to make a difficult golf shot because I've got to pitch the float in there plunge the rod tip under the surface and sink the line between the rod tip and the float very, very quickly. If I don't, what will happen is the line will float, the wind will blow it into a great big U shape and then it will drag the float out of position. The heat's really on today because we've got to catch fish. Um, my gut feeling is there aren't many fish in here. They're quality fish, they're good sized carp and just one fish I think would serve us very, very well. But. We know that the lake has had angling pressure in the past. We found that out last night, and uh, I don't think this is going to be easy. That'll get him going. It might take me two or three attempts to get this. Pitch the old nine iron up there, a bit far off the weeds. That's a lot, that's a lot, that's a lot. Tiger Woods, eat your heart out. Well, I'm into a fish. Very, very shallow water here, and there's lots and lots of snags, so I'm using quite a soft action rod. I've got to give this fish some real welly to keep it away from the various danger zones littered around the swim. <laughs> there it is. Nice common carp. Really trying to bully this fish in. Gotcha. Whoo. Well, that's a fantastic start to the day after the disaster yesterday in which I managed to lose a fish within five minutes of starting and then couldn't catch anything else. It's not a massive fish, this one, but a couple more of these would be very nice. Thank you very much. OK, let's have a look at it. Well, as you can see, it's, uh, it's a lovely common carp. Not a monster fish, but uh, it's a really, really good start. And I think this one probably weighs around about five to six pounds. Mick's got the scale, so we're just going to weigh it to get it dead right. Right, we're all zeroed up, mate. OK, Mick. Oh, that's good. Did yourself short there, mate. It's 
Seven one. We'll call it seven pounds. Seven pound. Oh, very nice. The touch over. Nice one, mate. Yeah. Well, that's halfway there, isn't it? Yeah. Good one. It's a good start. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to put it back? Yes, I will. The situation now is that we need fourteen pounds of fish to get to our next destination, which is near the Menai Straits. Now that could be one carp, one good carp, or maybe a bag of smaller fish. I think we're pretty sure there's not many carp in here, so the carp are proving quite a difficult option. Matt's gonna try and get one. I'm rigging up with lighter tackle, I'm gonna try and build up a bag of small to medium sized fish. And one way or another, we've just gotta get out of here. I mean, again, I've got to stop the fish from reaching that sunken island over there. And the fish is absolutely hell-bent on getting in there, but I'm using a fairly soft rod, and if I really let the rod do the work, I've got a chance of turning the fish away. It's right out in the open water, going towards the branches. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've got it away from one danger area, and now it's going to try and kite towards that island over to the right. One of the advantages of using a fairly soft rod for carp is that you can really lean into them and let the rod do the work and that's what I've been trying to do. Mix ready with the net. If we could land this fish it could be a very very important one for us because time's really pushing on and we need to get moving. It's a nice nice common carp. Yeah! <laughs> that's eight and a half, nine pounds, that'll get us out. My heart's still going. <laughs> yes, I think that one might just scrape us through too. The Menai Straits. OK, mate, you got the sling right. there. All zeroed up, mate. OK, mate, here we go. There you are. Better be bigger than seven pound. It's 9.11, as I... 9.11. So, so that gives us 16 pounds 11. Yeah. This is a lovely little lake, as you can see from the margins. All kinds of different types of weeds. And it's a spring-fed lake, which means the water's very clean perfect environment for carp and uh, I think that's a really good result. We struggled yesterday when we got here and we made a decision that we hadn't got our tactics particularly wrong, we just maybe weren't fishing in the right place. And now I think having got the game plan right, it's time for us to take it a stage on. We know that the next leg of the journey through Wales is going to be difficult because once we leave Anglesey, we're onto the River Conway system, Snowdonia, the River Dee, and quite honestly, we're not going to catch lots of big fish there. So we're going to stay here for a little while, see if we can nail another one, and then we'll move on to the next venue. Oh, I've just missed a pick up there. I can't do a thing right today. Most days, actually. Well, I've just had another dip on the float, and. As soon as you hook these fish, they go tearing across the lake because it's very shallow. They can't go down, they can only go away from you and it's really spectacular stuff. They're great fighters. And if we can land this fish, the gamble that we've taken in staying here has paid off. Come on, gotcha, yes. Now we're cooking on gas. Well, they're almost like the coloration of the strain of the original wild carp that were probably in this pond many, many years ago. And then it got silted up and had to clean it out and restock with fish. But I think maybe some of the original inhabitants stayed in the pond. They're very dark, these common carp, and they look very much like wildies in their coloration, but they're beautiful fish. There's something about it's a spring-fed lake, and I think the water just sticks to the body and gives them that wonderful sheen. What do you reckon it is, Matt? I reckon it's about uh, five and a half, six pounds. Get out again, it's, it's nearly six and a half pounds. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, look. Six, seven. So if we add that to 16 pounds and 11. Yeah, that's 22, 23, two. 23, two. Yeah. 23 yeah. pound two in the keep net. There you go, mate. Thank you. Do you want me to put it back? Yeah, you can do, Mick. Well, this wind is strengthening now, it's getting rougher and rougher. And the problem is when I cast to the weed bed out there, 
The line that's in the air as the float goes down towards the surface of the water gets blown into a big bow and it's continuously dragging the float out of position. So to get over that, I'm having to fire the float at the water at a low angle, pushing the rod tip down and literally bombing the float down in position. It's the only way I can do it. And it's a very tricky way to cast, but it does work if you get it right. Just drive the tip down and minimize the bow. And there's the float just popped up in position now. The bottom line is that if the float's too far from the weed beds, I don't get any bites, so I've got to fish pretty close. Well, I've just had an absolute stormer of a run. <laughs> I don't know what it is, it, it's gone right around the back of the island. I don't even know if I'm going to get this back, to be honest. I've only got a five pound line on here, so I've got to take it quite carefully. The way it's going under the bank, it probably is a carp, I would think. It can be a lesser spotted thrush warbler, as far as I'm concerned, as long as it's got fins. It's only about two feet deep down there, but I can't get this thing to come up and show itself. It could be a big fish, Mick. Well, I've only got a one pound test curve rod here, mate, and I can't pull too hard on it. Yeah, it was a great run. Oh, it was a stormer. I'd, I'd bolt rigged a uh, little cube of luncheon meat. I'd got it right on the tip of the island there. I'd just scattered a half a dozen free offerings around the bait, and as I say, it's really a waiting game, this sort of fishing. And if I can get this in the net, the wait was worthwhile. <laughs> It's really wild, windy conditions we're fishing in now, and I think this fight's definitely in keeping with it. It's, it's weird, when you're playing a big fish in the wind, you lose all the, the feeling and sensation and, you know, the touch coordination that you need to play it. And it's given you the... Uh, it's giving me the right run around is. this. Is. It's a good fish, though, Mick. I've seen it. It's and a it's, powerful fish. It looks like a mid-double. Do you think so? Yeah, I've seen it. Oh, don't they ever give in? Oh, it's a common. Yes. Well done, Sir Michael. Thanks, mate. Well done, Sir Am. Well, I only just got that one. Yeah. They're amazing looking fish. They're just like wild carp, yeah. long, lean things. If you can control it, Matt, I'll get the uh, sling. It's a tremendous fish, Mick, you know. It's ever so long. I mean, if this was a normal shaped carp, you'd be looking at something that weighed about 15, 16 pound there. Yeah. You really would. Well, I mean, it's going to be nowhere near there. Oh, it's a good fish. It's, Ooh, uh... it's a double figure fish. Well, it's 10 and a half, and we had 23.2, so that makes it 33.10. 33.10. So we can go 33 and a half miles. Nice one. Whew, now we're moving. Well, this is pretty standard practice, really. Just a simple cube of luncheon meat. I've just cut a little slab off a tin of luncheon meat there. I'll just chop it up into little half-inch cubes. Doesn't have to be too accurate. Put that on a standard hair rig, size 10 hook. And then I've got a big handful of offcuts, which I'm going to fire out around the area. Try and keeping them as close as I can to the hook bait. Fire them out with the catapult, and hopefully these will draw the carp in, the smell of this will draw the carp in. They'll find the one with the hook in and we should get one. Well, I just had a really big lift on the float and I wasn't sure whether it was a proper bite or a line bite, but I struck anyway and I'm into the fish. Hopefully it's fairly hooked and it's gone ramping round to the left-hand side, tried to get into a gap there. I've steered it away from there, and now it's going off to the right. There she goes. Oh, wow. Let's see if we can get the fish back round here to the left. They're real good fighters here. They go off at a rate of knots because the water here is very shallow, and that's typical of fish in shallow water, that they go flying off out the, out the starting gate and all over the lake. Oh, I don't half get their heads down, mate. Oh. oh, blimey, they, they love to go for these marginal rushes, don't they? Yeah. Anywhere where there's a bit of sanctuary, and they're straight for it. They're the right shape, aren't they, for fighting? They're like torpedoes. Yeah. And it's in well the middle. Well done, Sir Michael. Well, the mate. 
Another one? Not quite ready for the scrap heap yet, then. No, no. You've got a few more years yet. Oh, look at that for a beauty. That's a very nice fish, mate. Right, do you want to take control of it? Yep. Yeah. Right, there we go. Wow, that's a real torpedo of a fish, that one. Much paler in colour than the others. Right, Mick. That's all ready. OK, mate. Oh, nine pounds. Nine pounds. So that puts us up on over 42 now. 42. Well, <laughs> we're moving now, mate. Yeah, fantastic. Well, there it is. It's a much paler fish than some of the others we've caught. More sort of silvery appearance. Really beautiful fish. Very long, lean carp. And there it is. Wants to swim away. <laughs> there we go. Wonderful fish. Matt, you fish well today, mate. And we've Thank got you. 42 pound 11 in the net. And uh, I mean, compared to the very difficult fishing we've had in Ireland, this has been quite refreshing, really, hasn't it? Yeah, I think it's been the same weather, contrasting results. I think we can be pleased with the fishing's been highly technical, really, because of the difficult problems with the wind and the tiny little area I've got to get the float in to get the bites. But we've overcome it, we've caught the fish. I don't think we can afford to be too complacent because all of this rain is going to bring the rivers up and we need river fishing on this trip. So we may have to think the journey game plan. What we do know is our next venue is on the Menai Straits. We've got 42 pound odd in the keep net. That's about 14 miles away. So we're going to carry 28 pounds plus whatever we catch. So although there's going to be difficult times ahead, I think for the time being, we've done very well and it's back home for tea and medals. Two fishermen on a fishing mission from the west coast of Ireland to the east coast of England. Welcome to the Greater Rod Race. again, 42 pounds, 11 ounces in the keep net. We're moving down to here at the Menai Bridge. The fishery we're going for is called Linny Gorse. There's a huge amount of pressure on today, and I'll show you why. When we come out of Anglesey, we're going to follow the A5 through Betsy Coed, Corwin, Langothlan, into Shropshire. Wonderful territory, but they don't contain lots of big fish, so we're not going to add many pounds to our keep net. We're just going to top up, and that means that today we need a lot of fish to carry us through this journey. I think it's a big crunch day, probably one of the toughest of the trip so far, if not the toughest. And I think if we don't catch 60 or 70 pounds, we're gonna pay the price later. We've crossed the Irish Sea, and we're actually very near to the town of Hollyhead in Anglesey. That'll get him going. He's done the bait. How about that? <laughs> gotcha. Not a monster fish, but it's a really, really good start. Yeah! <laughs> now we're cooking on gas. Well done, sir. If we go up the A55 and then we've got to turn off left somewhere, before we get to the Menai Bridge, we've got to cut across, I think. Yeah, you want the A5, really, I think. Owner. I don't recognise any of the places on this map. Go on, turn around. Right. You old stupid old buffoon. Well, here we are. This is Linny Gorse Fishery, and there are several lakes here on this complex. Lots of specimen fishing available for big carp and big catfish, but we've opted to fish here on the Match Lake because we need to catch 
fairly sizable fish and we need to catch them quickly. Now there's plenty of different species in this pool. There's carp, tench, orf, perch, and one or two unusual species for still waters like barbel and chub. Now Mick and I are approaching the fishing slightly differently. I'm fishing on the pole. It's a very difficult day for that. The wind's strong, it's swirling in all sorts of different directions and controlling the tackle is very, very difficult. And that's why Mick, who's not familiar with pole fishing, has opted to fish the feeder. The idea between the two of us is to build up a big weight of fish. We're looking for about 70 pounds. And let me tell you, in these conditions, with the wind blowing, it's not going to be easy. There's the first fish of the session, and it's racing up and down this little channel like a speedboat, really. It's going all over the place. Look at him go. Yeah. I caught that one on corn, actually. I think the maggot's a good bait, but it seems to attract lots of little perch. Now, we're going to put these fish today in a keep net for the purposes of weighing them. But if you're into your barbel fishing, especially on the river where you're getting bigger fish, it really is a no-no to put them in a keep net. They'll be OK here, fish of this sort of size, but when you're catching big barbel, put them straight back in the water and don't bother with the keep net. It's, uh, it's difficult with barbel because the dorsal fin catches in the mesh. Oh, it's a barbel. No wonder it's fighting well. That's my first ever still water barbel. Surprisingly enough, it looks just like a river barbel. Probably getting on for a pound. So if we keep catching them, we'll soon build up the weight. Well, one of the things that's not making the fishing any easier today is the wind. And it's really difficult because it's coming in about four different directions every few seconds. And it's really hard just to hold the pole out there and Stop your tackle getting blown up into the gorse bushes on the far side, but the reason I'm fishing like this is because that's where the fish are, you know, they're, they're tucked hard into that cover on the far side, and the tighter I can fish, the more successful I'm going to be. The, the thing I'm going to have to do is just be patient, I think, and hope that ultimately the wind dies off a little bit, and that will give me a fighting chance, I think. There's plenty of fish there. I've been feeding for about 10 minutes and you know the float goes out there and it's dipping and weaving up and down so there's plenty of fish feeding there but I've got to hold the pole steady to get the presentation I need and uh, it's really not easy. We've just had a whacking bite it's just pulled the tip right round. I don't know whether this is another barbel it's going round and round like one. Oh it's a carp and it's a ghost carp. They really really do fight on this light tackle. Leading me a right merry dance, this one is. Yes, that is him. Yeah, look at that. Let's have a look at you. Oh, and as you see, you take the pressure off a barbley hook and it drops out. As long as you keep the pressure on, there's no problem. And there we have it. A lovely little ghost car. Oh, well, the problem with these barbel is that they shoot off at real high speed as soon as you hook them. And you've really got to be on your metal because if you don't, they'll go straight through the little gap in the island in front of me or around the tree or something. So as soon as you hook one, you've got to ship the pole straight back. They're real turbocharged fish and they're much quicker actually than carp. Well, I don't need to describe the weather. As you can see, it's absolutely awful. As if the wind wasn't enough, now it's started to pour down with rain and it's really coming down heavily. It just seems that the weather really won't break for us. I think if it did, we'd have some outstanding fishing here. Well, we've left Rosniga and we had 42 pound 11 ounce in the keep net. We've travelled 18 miles to the Linny Gorse Fishery, so that gives us 24 pound 11, plus anything else we can catch today. 
The fishing here is really, really good actually. And um, there's plenty of fish in front of us. We're getting loads of bites. Lots of these small barbel, occasional carp. I've had roach, small chub. You can't knock that. The weather has made it very, very difficult. And um, as well as the awkward swirling wind that's a little bit calm now, but it's been horrendous at times, literally ripping the pole out of my hands. And then we've got the torrential rain. And as it's going, I think we're doing okay. I think it's another one of those little barbels going all over the place. Oh, it's a little barbel. Oh, it's in the net. You can see the mouths on these barbel are really clean. No hook marks, no red marks at all. And that's because of the use of barbless hooks. got a nice mirror carp here and that's what we need to build the weight. It's uh, getting towards early evening now and uh, we're really beginning to run out of time. I don't think we've got enough fish yet. We're motoring away nicely but the bad weather has made the fishing really difficult and now we're just trying to pile the fish on. There's no room for finesse here. We're just fishing as fast as we can. It's real fast and furious stuff. Just trying to get as many fish as we can in the net. <laughs> About a pound and a half, I guess. Well, that's a little mirror carp. In fact, it's a very tiny mirror carp. And here's the big scales that look like mirrors that give it its name. Look at them glistening in the sunshine. Everyone's unique with a different pattern of scales on its body. I think I've had about five different species so far. It's brilliant. Well, the heat's really on now. We've had very difficult conditions with the wind. It's just eased off a little bit, and it's making the fishing much, much easier. The swim's absolutely fizzing with fish. It's like a jacuzzi out there at the moment. But of course, it's getting very, very late in the day, and I'm trying to pile up as much weight of fish as I can in the time left available. It's real fast and furious fishing. Got no real time to sit here and enjoy it, to be honest. It's just get the fish in the net as quickly as possible and try and pile on the weight. But I don't know, maybe we're losing the race. I don't think we've caught enough fish yet. Mick's just gone over to the pole. He's been struggling with the feeder to get tight enough to the far bank. He's now fishing against the pads, seeing if he can just catch those extra fish that we need. It's a real test of skill. It's a test of endurance. It's a race against time. And quite honestly, at the moment, we're definitely losing it. We're not catching enough fish. Well, I'm really quite excited because pole fishing is something quite new to me. I've only ever caught two fish in my whole life on a pole, and I'm into one now, and it is so much easier than fishing with the feeder. You can get the presentation absolutely precise, and uh, I've always known that, but I've never got around to actually doing it. And I've got a bite almost instantly. Look at this. I've been struggling to catch on the feeder, and I've just put the bait exactly where I want it with the pole and I've got a bite straight away, it's amazing. It's a common carp, fully scaled, about a pound and a quarter, nice fat one, very useful fish. Everyone counts now. I think it's going to be close. Well, here's the moment of truth. I think it's fished very well at Linny Gorse today, considering the conditions. It's been vile weather. We've had a real good go at this. We've got 24 pound 11 in the keep net already, plus what we've caught today. And our target was to get in total to over 70 pounds. So we need to have caught about 50 pound. And it's a little bit touch and go, but we're going to weigh in in the time honored fashion, starting with Sir M's fish. Can you get the waist thing ready? I will. I haven't got a great deal, so I hope you've got more than me. Well, I think you've done all right. That sounds like a healthy net to me. There's quite a lot of fish in there. 
Oh, no, that's actually Sarem. Oh, that's the opposite. Oh, look at that. We might need it. Oh, look that's very that. nice, that is. Very good, oh, Sarem. Look at the size like that. Oh, what you got right. there, Sam? Well, we've got 24 pound 11, less the weight of the sling. So the sling weighs what? It weighs exactly three pounds. Oh, right. So you've got 21.11. 21.11, yeah. I'm okay. happy with that. Well done, mate. Let's That's go good. There we go. Get the lever. I think that looks pretty heavy, mate. Yeah. I've got a lot of barbel. I did well on barbel. I've got a few more than I thought, me. Both of them. <laughs> you won't believe this. What? You got sixty-two pounds less three pounds for the sting. You've got fifty-nine pounds. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Can we put it down now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me tell you the maths, Sir M. Before we started, we had twenty-four pounds eleven ounces. Yeah. Our total catch today was eighty pounds eleven ounces, Agreed. which means we've got a grand total in our keep net to carry us through the difficult Welsh leg of the journey of one hundred and five pound six ounces, which I yeah. think is a right old result. I think we can give ourselves a big pat on the back yeah. and go back to the van for tea and medals. Around. Well, I'll pat you on the back. Thank you. And you can pat me on the back. I'll pat you on the back. There Good. you go. I'm sure that as you look at this fantastic place, you'll be wondering where it is. And in actual fact, we're very near to the town of Betsy Coed, which you'll find on the A5, right on the edge of the Snowdonia National Park. And this is the River Cledder. Now, downstream, it's joined by the very famous River Conway. And the Gwydda Hotel control around 14 miles of fishing on these two rivers. We stumbled upon this place almost by accident when we were surfing on the internet and boy are we glad that we did because this is fishing paradise. We're here of course to fish for salmon and sea trout and most of the fishing is going to be at night after dark for the sea trout but before it gets dark I'm going to try for salmon in this pool and Mick's going to try a little bit further down river for the brown trout. It's such a beautiful place that I know we're in a fishing race but Catching a fish here will be a bonus. It's absolutely stunning here. If you've watched our shows before, you'll know I'm not a great fly fisherman. I'm not that experienced at it, but in this challenge, we've got to do all sorts of fishing wherever we find ourselves, and I'm always prepared to have a go. I'm pretty happy with the rod and the reel. It's a pretty standard eight weight trout rod with a eight weight floating line. And I've got a seven pound leader, which I've tapered down to a four pound point. And I put on a little pheasant tail nymph for gold head, something recommended by one of the local anglers. But anyway, as I cast into this pool now, I'm going to really enjoy just feeding that fly down the current, just round into the slack water at the edge, and might pick up a brown trout. But always in my mind, I'm thinking that fly is going past a salmon, maybe waiting for some water so it can go up river to spawn. Might be going past sea trout that are waiting for darkness to fall before they start feeding. So it is quite exciting. There's a lot going on down there. And if I can just get a bite, I might catch something. Well, I'm starting with a short cast and I'm going to progressively work my way across. But there's no point covering the water on the far bank till I've covered the water close to me. I'm just casting on the edge of the streamy water where it drops down over the boulders into the deep hole. I would expect the fish to be waiting just as it deepens off where the food is coming down and turning over and collecting. Well, I've given this 
pull a pretty good lash on the fly now for the salmon. There's not much current to move the fly around, so it's not a great pull for the fly. But it was worth a go, and we're getting ready now for the magic hour. Now, this is a special time on the Conway. Most of the sea trout rivers I've ever fished, all of the fishing takes place well into the hours of darkness. But here on the Conway, they reckon that dusk is an excellent time for sea trout. So we're going to go with the local advice and start fishing before I would normally fish. And I think what I'll do now is wind in, get the sea trout gear ready, and let's just hope when we get fishing that there's a few fish running these pools. Now we're coming into the magic hour and this is a very special time to be on the river. I absolutely adore sea trout fishing. There's something very special about being out in the water alone at night in the darkness and then somewhere out in the blackness of the pool you hear a big fish jump. It sends shock waves through your heart. And of course when you least expect it you get that tightening or big pull on the line. And that in itself is absolutely magic. Hook a big sea trout at night and you're in for a huge fight. And I think it's probably the pinnacle of British fishing. If you're going to fish for sea trout, there are a few things you need to understand. And the principal one is the fact that the fish is not here in the river to feed. Basically, it begins life in the river and it lives its life as a normal sea trout would, feeding on small waterborne insects until after a few years it approaches maturity. And at that stage then, it goes out to sea. And it's at sea that it does its feeding. Out there it will feed on shrimps, prawns, crabs, anchovies and it will grow large. Now sometimes the sea trout will come back into fresh water to spawn after just one year at sea. But on other occasions it might wait several years before it comes back. And unlike salmon, sea trout can return to spawn time and time again. And that's when you get the really big fish, the fish that have been back into the river on several occasions. What we're trying to do with our flies is to promote a reaction, to invoke a primitive feeding instinct, a memory perhaps of feeding in the river or at sea that causes the sea trout to literally grab at the fly out of instinct. And when it does, it's absolutely magic. Sometimes when you see trout fishing, you haven't got much room to back cast behind you and on a smaller river, you can improvise beyond the sort of basic overhead cast by either roll casting the flies out like this or making up what's called a single spay cast. Just behind me here, I've got some trees. So fishing the head of the pool here where the water runs in nicely is very, very difficult, but it's a good place to find sea trout. So by using the single-handed spay cast, I can get the line out right across the pool and carry on fishing an area that most people would bypass. So it's worth spending time practicing these casts to be able to get to those awkward spots that most people don't even bother fishing. Well, the situation is, thanks Mick, that uh, fished pretty hard really. I fished three pools in total, didn't see any sea trout, didn't get any bites. But you know, that's sea trout fishing. You could come on another night where there's plenty of fish in the river and you get bites all night long and it's a beautiful place to fish. Well worth a gamble. Uh, as far as the scores on the doors are concerned, well, we started off with 105 pounds in our keep net. We've used 26 miles getting here to Betsy Coed. So basically we've got 79 pounds left, which it was worth a gamble, you know. Um, we had to come along the A5. Uh, we haven't really gone off route. It was just worth a go. And, I think the only thing we've lost is a little bit of time in the morning because we're going to have to sleep now when we could have been fishing early doors, but ah, it was worth a go. It was a nice place.
two fishermen on a fishing mission from the west coast of Ireland to the east coast of England. Welcome to the Greater Rod Race. Well, so far on an adventure, we've caught more than 350 pounds of fish. And since we arrived here in Wales, our tally's 123 pounds. Now to get here, and this is Len Brennig, which is in the Snowdonia National Park area of Wales, we've actually used up 60 miles. So we've got 63 pounds of fish left in our keep net. And the good news is that if we catch any fish today, we can add to that. So we think this is a good spot. Now the good news about this place is it's a stocked rainbow trout reservoir, so there's plenty of fish to go at. And while I'm going to target the trout, there are bonus fish here as well. That's right, Matt. Pike have started to appear in the reservoir in recent years. And if I could catch just one modest pike of seven or eight pounds, that's worth a lot of trout and it puts a good few bonus miles onto the journey. So while I fish for trout, Mick's going to do a little bit of trout fishing, but if we get a chance to try for a pike, he's got the kit here to do it. Into here at the Menai Bridge. This is Linny Gorse Fishery, and we need to catch fairly sizeable fish and we need to catch them quickly. That's my first ever still water barbel, probably getting on for a pound. Get him go. So if we keep catching them, we'll soon build up the weight. Yes, that is it. I don't think we've caught enough. I think it's going to be close. Look at that one. You've got 62 pounds. Good. <laughs> we've got pound now. <laughs> Well, there's the tower. Yeah. Apparently, there's a lot of fish between the tower and the bank at the moment. Is that? And the wind's perfect for a drift from the tower into the shore. Is there perch in here, do you think? I would imagine there are. Fantastic day after all the weather we've had. I oh, know. Great, isn't it? The only trouble is we can't make any excuses today. No? Good weather, the fish are feeding, no excuses. Lovely place, isn't it? Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. If only they knew, we can't fish for toffee. That's true. <laughs> Rex on to John Wilson, hook them on for us. Come on, Rex, put a trout on for us. There's no anchors on these boats, though, is there? No, I don't think they do much anchoring, do they? But you want the nose in the other way, don't you? Yeah, I'm going to turn it round then. There's a trout. The casting's getting much better. I can't catch anything. My best work. You got him, Matt? Yeah. I have indeed, Sir M. Well, that's nice, Mick. First drift and first fish. How's that? Brilliant. I shall do my best with this one to effect a successful release. Well, there it is, Sir M. About two and a half pounds of rainbow trout. Oh, easily, yeah. Very nice start. Two and a half pounds hooked on a buzzer, which I've just removed. And there goes the fish. Well, I've just changed over to my heavier 10 weight rod, which is a pike fly rod. I really would like to catch a pike here. It's lovely, clear water. And they do tell us that there was a 16 pounder caught here only a couple of days ago. Yeah, I'm in, Mick. Again. Nice one. <laughs> that was a nice, gentle take, that one. The fish is coming right up on the surface now. Here he comes. Oh, it's a nice one. Basically, I'm fishing with a, an orange blob on the point and then two buzzers above that and moving the flies pretty slowly, actually, just trying to keep touch with them. Do you want to net that one? It's looking like a netter, mate, yeah. Right on the middle dropper again. There's something about the colour of that fly they like. There he is. Oh, he's not ready yet, though, matey. Wow. What a great fight, Sir M. Oh, that big fish, that's mine. Yep. Oh, really? There's a bit of a mess on the Are old really? dropper there, mate. Well done, Sir Michael. <sighs> oh, oh, yes. That's, that's a three pound That's a three pound trout. Easily. Let's just hold it up so everyone can see it. Oh, there you are. An absolute beauty. And we're going to eat this one for tea, so I shall leave Sir Michael to dispatch it and then he'll quickly weigh it. But I think three pounds is not going to be far out. Sir Michael? There you go, Sir Em. 
Now, people will think we're cheating. It's exactly three pounds. Well, you know. Three pound, exactly. I hope I'm looking suitably smug. Bang on. What can I say? That's what's called a bird's nest. We started off really well, but it's gone really quiet now. It's got a little bit colder, a little bit grayer. Matt took a couple of very nice fish early on, but all of a sudden it's gone dead. I don't know what's gone wrong. The fish that were up near the top seem to have gone down, so maybe we have got to go deeper for them. There's a good chance that if we stay till dark, they might come up as the evening progresses. But we're here for the day now, so we're just going to keep on fishing keep on hoping. Well, there he is. Smaller fish this time. Well, that's a fish of about a pound and a half, I'd say, so that takes our tally up by my reckoning to seven pounds. Very nice. Although Matt's done very, very well to get three fish, we still haven't got many pounds. So I'm trying for a pike to try and boost the weight a bit. And we've come into this bay here, which looks a bit pikey to me. It's a bit shallower, but the sun's going down and we're running out of time and there's not much in the keep net today. We've just seen a group of fish come past us and they're actually behind us now. They look like they're feeding on stuff on the surface, Phil. And there's a group of several of them, so basically, we're going to crank her up and we're going to have them. We go around in a big loop. There's a group of them there, Mick. Oh, yeah. Oh, I got him. Yeah, yeah. Told you we'd get them, Brownie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's off. No, he isn't. Oh, he's still on. <laughs> Come on, make your mind up. I was determined to get one of those fish there. Is that a netter? I can release him in the water, I think, mate. He's on the point. They're some of the best stockfish I've seen. Very actually. nice, yeah. They're very good, aren't they? I'll tell you what, Sir Em. That's another three pounder, that is, boy. Come here, baby. Let's just have a look at it, yeah? Beautiful fish, look at that. About three pounds again, I'm really pleased about that. We ran round and ambushed them. <laughs> anyway, let's see if we can unhook this one in the water. See the flight? Got it. Now, that's the way to release trout if you want to let them go, because if you take them out of the water, it decreases their chance of survival. So if you are going to return rainbow trout, fish with a barbless hook, and always try and keep them in the water if you can. By my reckoning, that means we've caught 10 pounds of fish today. However, it's four miles off track to get here and four miles back, so we're only two in credit, really, but <laughs> we've had a nice afternoon fishing. Yeah. Well, the pike fishing didn't work for me. So we're back where we started earlier on. We're back in the area where Matt had two or three nice fish but it's still not working for me. I must be doing something very different to Matt. So, Matt, what is it, mate? What am I doing wrong? Well, as you know, Mick, during the course of the day, trout move up and down in the layers of the water, and that can be dependent on the amount of sunshine, the natural insect hatches, even things like angling pressure can dictate what depth the trout are stationing at. And it's interesting that of all the fish that I've caught, they've all come at different depths and different speeds of retrieve. So I'm continuously experimenting with the depth I'm fishing the flies at, the speed of the retrieve, etc. And I think that's what makes the difference. So what we've done now is to change your fly over and I've put you a lead-headed fly on, which with your floating line will get you down that little bit deeper and allow you to search the layers better. But it has gone quiet. You know, it's overcast now, it was sunny before. There are no rising fish. I think we just got to hope that as we come now into that last trickle of light that the fish will have one last go and they'll come up nearer to the surface and come on the feed. Well, that sounds pretty good advice to me, mate. Let's just hope I can get one.
Yeah, mate. Well That's done, Sir M. Oh, brilliant. I thought I wasn't going to get one, and I'm just lifting the line and bang, right at the side of the boat, mate. That's great. How about that? Lovely, mate. Woo, look at that go. Hey. Well done, mate. Well, certainly the reason I got the take was because I'm fishing a deeper fly. The fish are deeper than I was fishing before, but we've just gone through a load of fish and got a bite straight away. Don't they fight here, though? They're oh, very nice, yeah. Not a particularly big one, Matt. It's a two pounder, isn't it? Yep, sure is. Better than a wart on the end of your nose, yeah. Michael. Well, there it is, a two pounder. I might be an old pike fisherman, but I can catch a trout now and again. <laughs> and I'm not going to mess about it. I want that one to live, so it's going straight back. Off you go. Well, that's 12 pound in the net now. And I've got a bit of a smile on my face. I've caught one at last. I'd be better switch him over to dry flies, mate. Okay, Sir M. Well, it's been a really good afternoon. We've run out of time, but we've added 12 pounds to the keep net, which now stands at 75 pounds. So not a bad diversion, and we've really enjoyed the fishing. This is a fantastic place, and if you like your stillwater trout fishing, you should definitely come here. It's absolutely lovely.